Romans 1. Where are we at? We're going to fly here. Ready? Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. This is just where we're at in the Word. And 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 the message that the title, which I've, I've, a lot of you guys know, I didn't ever start titling things, so we're doing all this online stuff. But the power of God for everything, man. The power of God for everything. What is that? It, it's the gospel. You know, and it's the message that, that God is enough. And Paul writes this, and, and then we'll pray. Listen, he says, he says, for I, verse 16, Romans 1, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile, most of us here, you know? And, and, and in that, listen, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. And I love it. It's a righteousness that lasts, you could say as well. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And so two powerful verses. Usually we do much more, but there's some other things I want to share as we get in here. But powerful verses when we understand them. And, and, it, and, it, and it's what we need today so much, more than ever before. Faith from first to last. It's, it's a long haul. It's like God said to Elijah when he, when he gave him the, bre- the bread and the water and told him the rest the second time. And he says, for the journey before you is long. So let's pray and commit this to the Lord. Father, Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you so much, Lord, that we can open your word and you'll speak. I thank you for the, that you're going to minister to and touch anyone here, each one here, as our hearts are open. Lord, for any that just have a, a, a glint of a, a little bit of light shining through, Lord, Lord, shine so bright, God. Let them see that, that you are found and you're found here in your word and here in the fellowship of the saints. And all of it, Lord, we give to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul says, verse 16 again, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Why would Paul need to say that he's not ashamed of the gospel? You think about it. You know, well, God knew ahead of time that we would be reading this even today. And he knew that the church would, would understand that, that there's, there's an attack on our hearts when it comes to the gospel that the enemy wants us to fear. The enemy wants us, and we've seen it, you've all, we've all felt it, to fear, you know, not being accepted, you know, being rejected because, you know, you're a part of the minority that is going to say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I, I believe this. You'll be laughed at. Maybe you've been there before. If you truly profess Christ as your Savior, if you literally, you know, share that, he, hey, he raised from the dead. You know, Jesus raised from the dead. And Jesus from 2,000 years ago can be known today. And times haven't changed. People will laugh and people will mock, but that's because they, they don't know, they don't understand. And once their eyes are open, many of you have been there before. Where all of a sudden you saw, this is real, man. God touched your heart through it. And Paul wrote this in, in 1 Corinthians 1, 23. He says, but we preach, we proclaim, we herald. This is our message. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. A crucified Messiah. I mean, that's a stumbling block to the Jews. You know, the Messiah, how could he go, you know, how, hanging on a cross? That's our Messiah? Yeah, read Isaiah 53 and maybe you'll understand. That's your Messiah. Jesus comes in the ways that we wouldn't expect. And then foolishness, laughable to the Gentiles, to the Greeks, we could say to, to most, to the lost. And today, in much the same way, you guys, you think about it, it's foolishness to many, if not most, of all of our unbelieving friends. You've been there, the condescending words, oh yeah, well, I'm sure that's good for you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you feel that way, you know. But ours is to look people, and listen, yours and mine is given to us, the power of the gospel, to look people in the eye. Ask God for this strength. But look them in the eye and tell them, yes, this gospel, this word that Jesus is God, that he died for me, that he rose from the dead, and he can be known right now, you can know him. To look him in the eye and say, yes, this is true. That this message, you, you, listen, it wasn't and it isn't today happily received by most. We know that. But it will be by some. So we go after all that we might, you know, reach some, as Paul said. And again, that condescending voice again. Nice for you. Glad that you have something that you believe in. All when that one that speaks those words has no hope at all, really. 
They have, well, well what I think, what I feel. Well, how, are you, how have your thoughts and feelings, you know, how, how does that help Lahaina? How does that help, you know, the, the thousands and thousands of people that are grieving right now? The loss of loved ones. Literally thousands and thousands of people are grieving the loss of their loved ones and, and, their, and their homes and their, and their livelihood and you guys and our town. It's huge, man. But people have been duped. They've been deceived in ours to love. And God warns us ahead of time. He tells us you can expect it in 1 Corinthians 1, 18. For the message of the cross, he tells us again, it's foolishness to those who are perishing. But to we who are being saved, it's the power of God. You know, and how it is, man. I mean, that's, that's what we rely on every day. It's everything. And if, if that, this message that we share, you know, every time we gather, you guys, if it's true, and it is, it is the power of God. Because if your life has been touched like mine, you know that, that, that you have been changed. You're not who you were before. That's right. And th though you may smell the same, look the same, you know, Way the same, some of us, you know, maybe not, but, but all that to say, it's like, you've been changed. And that's the message that we have, and it can't be refuted. Those that know us from before, like, you know, when, when you guys walked up, and, hey, you were my bartender, you know, I love that, you know, we've been changed. And so again, the Bible tells us straight out that the mocking is going to come, the response is going to be, reject the gospel, this message of the cross is foolishness. And so you could say that Paul warns us here that we're not to give in to their laughter, that we're not to give in to the shame, you know, because there's nothing to be ashamed about. And get this too, understand, when the enemy tempts you to shame, to, to shut up, you know, that fear to, to speak, you know, and say the name of Jesus and, and give people hope there, understand, that's because he, just know, he's afraid. He knows the enemy, the devil knows the power of the gospel. And he knows the power of the gospel to save even the totally lost. So don't ever look at anybody and think they're too far gone or whatever. Right now, when people are at, their, at the end of their rope, you guys, Jesus is there waiting, and he, he'll bring them to your life. Amen. And when we remember, listen, when we remember how God saved us, when I remember, and it's so important that we do, how that Jesus died for me, when I remember the cross, how he loved me there, how he took my sin on himself. And then he rose that, that he could know me. Not just to go, look at what I did, you know. But it's that he could know us and we could know him. When I think on that, listen, you know, I, there's no shame in the gospel. That, you know, that he would love me and save me. That I'm going to share it with anybody. And here's the thing. And this is cool. I thought of this last night. That's why at the end of a Bible study or a time like this in the word, you're so unashamed. You're like, bring them on, you know. Because power has been passed on to us as we, as we open up the word this way. And, when we, and we need to expect the attacks, but we, we need to remember, listen, what was said, the, think of it, we were just there in Acts. What was said in the end of the book of Acts, you know, of the gospel there, uh, in Acts 28, 22, the, the leaders of the Jews in Rome, what they had said to Paul as he got to Rome. They said in Acts 28, 22, listen, we want to hear what your views are, for we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. We want to know what your views are because we know that people everywhere are talking against your views. So we want to hear your views. You know? And and, and so and, and the view is basically that they were hated. All when the, what we want to bring is love. And 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 you could say at the same time, they're still talking against us all the time. You watch and you listen to what goes on with the media and how they point to so many other things and try to paint the church, you know, with, 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 with black rather than, than light. And, and even in times like this, because the devil doesn't want truth getting out, you know, Jesus Christ is a threat. And right now the enemy sees that. And so that's why the attacks on us and in their homes and with all these things, you know, and, you know, just, you know, how many people, even yesterday, after the, after the fire week before last or whatever, and then after the, the, uh, the, the warnings, you know, to evacuate here, you know, right after that. And then all of a sudden, just getting calmed down, just pack, unpack your bags that you've had there waiting just in case again, you know. And then all of a sudden, you get them unpacked and, and you take a breath. And now all of a sudden, whoo, the siren is going off and, and people are hurting and thinking maybe we should just go. 
Listen, that's what, that's what the enemy wants. He wants, you know what? Everybody leave. Everybody leave. Let, let me destroy this place. You guys, but the church needs to say, hey, I'm going to stay. And, and, and it, what's so cool, too, you know, how media and those that might talk against, you know, the church. The other day I, I was talking with this politician uh, there at the Hyatt. You know, a lot of politicians running around these days. Local politician, not a believer, uh, known her a little bit for quite a while, just little for a long time, many, many years. But she was going on and on singing the praises of the church and how the church has been on it. And how you guys have been faithful and you guys are serving our community, you know, and I love it, you know. And, and so now is the time to shine. Now is the time that even more so for the church, for the, as we talked about a few weeks ago, everybody says we need boots on the ground, boots on the ground. And I'm glad you guys that are here are here, boots on the ground. But more than anything, you know, we need prayer. We need people, knees on the ground, saints on the ground, calling out to God because he has all the answers. In Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said it. Let your light so shine that all that you do, your light, your life, let it so shine before men that they'll see your good works in Lahaina and glorify your Father in heaven. What's the greatest way to bring glory to God? See people saved, man. See people follow and find Jesus. Because Lahaina is just a glimpse of what's going to happen in the whole world. You know, read Romans 18. Read Romans chapter 6. Let that, let the fires there light a fire under you here right now where we have this, this opportunity. And I love it because for Paul, it didn't matter what anybody else thought, what anybody else said. The gospel, that simple message, Christ crucified, dead, buried, raised on the third day. That simple message, when it's heard by any open heart, when it's believed, just listen, if this morning there's a question, if you're here or if you're watching online, if there's any question, just a little bit of openness. You just say, God, Show me. He will show you that this is real. Right. It's more real than anything you've ever experienced. Right. William R. Newell. I don't know who he is. He's an old one of the old dead guys, you know, like I talk about. The best commentaries you'll ever get, you know, the old dead guys. But William R. Newell writes this in his commentary about this simple message of the gospel. Listen to this. He says, this story of Christ dying for our sins, buried, raised, and manifested, basically revealed to the world. This story is the great wire along which runs God's mighty current of saving power. And it's true. This is a simple message of a, of a bloody cross and an empty tomb, but all for me. That Jesus died for me. He took my place. He rose from the dead. And it's so simple that we can feel like we need to make it more sometimes, you know, and, and, and take away maybe something that might make it more palatable, like the whole, you know, years ago and still around with different names on it, seeker-friendly movement. But there you can find that the gospel loses its power when you take away the cross and the blood of Jesus. You know, what, what, what is it worth? If, if, you know, how, how do we find salvation? And how could it be that one man's blood could cover the sins of the whole world? Think about it. One man for all of the world. How could that be? Listen, here's the, here's the idea. This is God's plan. If that one man was the creator of the whole world, if it was God become man, a man, so he could cover mankind, if God became man, if the creator became the sacrifice for the sins of the world. That's how it happened. And that's what Jesus did. Who would have thought of it? Only God can think of these kind of things. And well-meaning Christians, you know, us as well, you know, we time to time we make it into other things. We make it, it the gospel into going to church. Well, you need to get to church. You know, that's not it. It's not about reading our Bibles. It's not about prayer. It's not about making it into what so many people are into. Community. It's about community. We need community. Listen, we need community. We need fellowship and service. We need prayer. We need to read our Bible. We need to go to church. But that's not the gospel. The gospel is the person of Jesus Christ come enter into your life. And, and, and change you, transform you. So that all of a sudden, going to church and reading your Bible and prayer and fellowship becomes a part of who you are. That you, that you have to do this. His name, his simple message, the cross of Christ, and that mustard seed of faith, as the Bible tells us, is what we need. Newell goes on to say, we'll call him Newell, you know, uh, he goes on to say this. Again, 
the great wire along which runs God's mighty current of saving power. He says, listen to this. He says, beware, Christian, beware lest you be putting up some little wire of your own, one unconnected with the divine throne, and therefore non-saving to those with whom you speak. And so you guys, again, salvation comes only and is offered only by grace through faith in God's message, the gospel, the good news, the good news of Jesus, to everyone that believeth. Robert Haldane, another guy, old, old dead friend of mine, he says this, he says, this power of God into salvation is applied through faith, you know, and, and, and that place of your believing. And I was thinking, you know, and I love the word applied there. I was thinking the power of God into salvation is applied through faith. You know, what happens, you know, with sunscreen? You know, what do you do with sunscreen? You know, reapply. You know, if you got kids, you know, reapply, reapply. I mean, that's what we got to do with our faith. We have, to, we have to jump in. We have to reapply. We have to hear the message again. He says, listen, it's applied through faith without which God will neither justify or save any man because it, faith, is God's appointed means of his people's union with Jesus Christ. It says faith accepts the promise of God. Faith embraces us, the satisfaction and the merit of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice of which we are. he is the foundation of all salvation. And neither that salvation nor that merit would be imputed, would be given to you were it not rendered ours by faith. And finally, he says, by faith we give ourselves to Jesus Christ in order that he may possess and conduct us forever. That's the plan. Owned, as we read, as we opened up the book in chapter 1, verse 1, as Paul was. Owned and conducted by Jesus Christ. Possessed and purposed. In, sec in, in second Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, many of you know it. For we are God's workmanship. The word for workmanship in the Greek is poema, which is uh, where we get our English word poem from. We're, we're this, we, the church, is as God's poem, his workmanship. And listen, here it is. For us today, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. You guys, God has plans. Already knows what he has for Calvary Chapel to do in this and each and every believer that's here on this island or coming to it or praying for us. And so the question comes, well, who is it or was it that owns you today? You know, we, are, we, are, we, are you God's workmanship or are you, well, and who's conducting your life? Is it, is it fear? Is it loss? Is it the world shattering? Literally life altering. All of our lives, those of us that live here, have been completely changed. But the question is, okay, in that change, what conducts the way that I move? What directs me? You know, Jesus wants to be that one that conducts. Jesus has a plan. He's prepared in advance what he has for us. And ours isn't to just run, which is what I try to do sometimes. But it's, I need to find, God, what do you have? What have you prepared in advance for us? And then walk in that. I mean, the, the thing is, is that whatever we face, whatever is, is whether it's fear or, 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 or hurt and pain, Jesus wants to enter into that. He himself wants to enter in, and he wants to change that in our lives and the way that maybe it's still there, but the way that it'll be felt, the place that you go from that place, and he wants to do it, and again, as we said, because he's alive and he can be known. And if you let God today do what he wants to do, you know, we can leave here. And, and we do, but we got to remember it again afterwards, right? But we leave here again with faith for what the world needs in front of us. And you think about this, too. Again, the destruction, the death that we are all living with on a daily basis as we'll start to find out more and more people that we knew that that are gone. They go from one list, the missing list, to the to the deceased. The things that we're living with right now, this you know, which seems huge, it's happening all over the world. It, it, it's 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 all under the cover of life as usual all around the world. Let me explain. Listen, think about it. Loss, hurt, pain, death. We all we all went through these things before. We may be experiencing it on a large scale, a grander scale right now. But small scale or large, it doesn't matter. When death hits your home, 
when 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 cancer comes, when when Ukraine over there, the bombs start falling, when the sirens here we hear go up. Oh my gosh, we gotta you know in, in Israel they're used to that sirens. There's bombs coming. There's bombs coming. Happens all the time. And so you guys, the only answer for all the world God has given us, it's it's Jesus Christ. And the Bible is true. I will tell you, listen, the, the devil is not just focused on Lahaina. And he's not just focused on your life like you might feel like it sometimes. But the devil comes all over the world to kill, to steal, to destroy. Large scale, Lahaina, all those places that will come after this that will take away the light shining on us right now. Small scale, a family morning, you know, in Waipahu or or Washington D.C., you know, whatever it is, it's it's that the the focus, listen, around the world is the same. Grief has no address. It comes on large scale or lesser scale, but it's all pain. But since grief grief has no address, we need to remember that that faith doesn't either. Jesus has no address because he's a, he's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere all the time. God so loved the world. You know the words. God so loved the world. And again, that's the message that we have. And it's true. And the devil wants you to doubt. He wants to silence you with the fear of, of man's response. And it's all because, again, he knows the power of the gospel in the heart of one that will truly believe. And people will get saved. And people will meet Jesus. And the unashamed, you guys, listen, are powerful. And think about this. Paul, he wasn't ashamed because he knew that you know, that this laughed at message was the only message that all the world needed. We got to be convinced of that. We know it. We need to be reminded. He had personally tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and that's what drove him forward. This, this one that had laughed and mocked, and not only laughed and mocked, but murdered Christians, Paul. The gospel was enough for him. And, and, and Jesus is enough for any and all right now. And again, he who you and I would never accept, somebody that God brings along to your life, that guy, man, they just deserve whatever they get. Jesus not only accepts, but he has a plan to use them for any that will call on his name. Isaiah 55, hey, let the wicked, let the evil man, let the unrighteous turn from their wickedness and their evil ways and come to me. And basically, I'm, at the end of it, God says, I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them. He'll take any that will call on his name. Remember, too, again, God had a plan to use them greatly. Well, what did God do in your life? Well, I'm just me. I don't Listen, go to James chapter 5. Don't turn there now, but do it later. And read at the very end of the book. God says, God says to us through James that Elijah, you know, the great prophet, Elijah was a man just like us. I mean, we look at Paul and these guys, men just like us. You know, and it, but what's the difference between them, them and me and you? It's like, listen, it's it's they walked in the faith that God had in front of them. They had weakness along the way, but they turned to Him and they trusted Him. And the icing on the cake. Look at verse seventeen. For in the gospel, in the gospel, is a righteousness from God that is revealed. It's a re it's revealed. I love it. Righteousness revealed from God. Righteousness that is by faith. When we need it, listen, from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And that's what I need all day, first to last, from the moment that I wake up. You guys, the only way to make it through what's going to be in front of us in the days ahead, and I believe this with all my heart, you know, Lahaina and the grand scale of what's in front of us, is going to be faith. It's believing in things that we don't see and don't understand. And I think, you know, I, with all my heart, with all my heart, I believe that, that God is waiting on a grand scale to pour out faith here in Lahaina. I mean, there's so many pastors that have said, and guys that I respect, you know, not the, not the guys that I, I wonder at why they would ever say that, you know, kind of things, you know, that get a lot of the, the pump and the prompt, you know, whatever. But guys that I respect that are, Truly, guys, men of the word and, and not out for the money and all the rest, you guys. But saying, hey, you know what? God is going to do a work in Lahaina. God is going to do a work in Lahaina. You know? And you know what? And, I, and I, it's so hard. I want to run, man. 
I want to run. It's like, you know, sell it and let's let's kill the we'll kill the oxen and we'll 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 burn the plow and, and, and we'll we'll go somewhere else. You know what? Wherever you are, there you are. And the devil will hate you there. And the devil will come after you there just as he's come after us here in whatever ways it is. And so our place is to make a stand. You guys, our place is to stand in faith, put on the armor of God to fight in this grand scale that God might bring faith and salvation. And I love it. Press down. I know this is out of context, but press down, shaken together. And then what? You know the words? Running over. Running over. You know, I mean, and people think, yeah, but did you see? Look at it. How can that happen? God can do it, man. God can do it. He wants to do it. And I know that that's what God wants to do because that's who he is. And God's word tells me, Steve, you just stay, you just stand, you just pray, and you ask. And be believe God for more. You guys, believe God for big and, and bigger. And again, the question comes, you know, well, how? How? Listen, you know the words. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't look at Lahaina. Don't look at the, at, the, at the things that are there. Don't look at the waves and the storm. Lean not on your own understanding. What you think. Well, well, this is what I... No, no, don't think. In all your ways, what does it tell us? In all your ways, you acknowledge him, and he'll guide your path, and he'll make it straight. You guys, that's our God. And that gives us a whole other reason that Paul wasn't ashamed of the gospel. For in the gospel, again, a righteousness from God is revealed. Listen carefully, because this is, as they say, too good. A righteousness that God freely gives, that God bestows on his own, righteousness from God upon any that will believe in his son and his work on the cross. Yeah, you're going to do that again, back to the cross. Yeah, that's where we go. That's where we understand. That's where we, that's where we have hope. If God loved us that much, then he can do this. Listen, it can't be explained, his rightness revealed and given to us, the righteousness of God revealed to us. It can't be explained, it can't be understood, but it can only be experienced and then, and then enjoyed, walked in. Again, if we'll truly ask, God says it, you will receive. I challenge you, man, ask. Challenge God. God, if you're really real, if this is true and you're in this, then you show me. He'll show you. If you really want to know, he'll show you. There's no question. There's no doubt. He's God. This is true. And that's our message again. In Romans, we'll be there in just a couple weeks. Romans 3.21. But now a righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. We see it all throughout the Old Testament, pointing to these things of Christ. 